Hello, this is Father Louis Skirty back with Mario Bruschi. Mario is a spiritual son of Padre Pio, Saint Padre Pio, and the first episode we met Padre Pio with Mario, and we didn't hear Mario's confession, but he, Padre Pio, did. And Mario's big question was, I never heard the words Ego te absolvia, I absolve you, which are the, the blessings of uh, confession. So go back and you can hear the details of that story. So my next question to, to Mario is, okay, so you met him, you met the saint, you were touched by him, literally, more than once, you smacked your head. Uh, this is the, the relic of Padre Pio, first class relic. No, no, it's the second class relic. The, blood, uh, the glove is a second class relic, and the blood but is the hidden. blood is first class. Okay, the blood is on this <clears throat> image, first class relic, and second. So first class relic is part of the saint, the individual we're talking about, and the glove is what he wore on his hands to cover the wounds of the stigmata. He had wounds on both hands, side, and both feet. Okay, so you meet Padre Pio with your mother, and you come back to the United States, and what happens? Time goes by, and all of a sudden, I get a call from this priest, Father Archangel Seeker, and I called him. I just heard about him, because he was a uh, chaplain for the drug addicts down on Second Avenue, called the Morris Bernstein Institute. So I, I asked him if I could help him in any way, and sure enough, he brought me there. On Sunday, I went there with him to help him gather the Catholics, the drug addicts, and bring him to a certain room where he said Mass. And from there, we concocted the idea of letting him know about Padre Pio. Hmm. So, and then from then on, I said, how am I going to do it? First, I bought slides, and the slides of Padre Pio, and I started doing slideshows on Padre Pio to these drug addicts and explaining to them the whole story, oh. his whole life story, what he was, the stigmata, the miracles, and so on. And then I was fortunate enough to get the projector, 60 millimeter projector, and a film, a 60 millimeter film on Padre Pio, the BBC film. Wow. <clears throat> so, uh, I, I uh, brought the projector, which is very heavy, and every time I brought it in, I had to go through security, check it out, if you had a bomb inside, I don't know. But I did. Well, you look suspicious. I look, I look, I look like a mafioso anyway, so he says, <laughs> he said, uh, okay, I want you to come here if you can, every Thursday, bring the projector, and that's what I did. I brought the projector, and the, the men saw it first. But they were a little difficult to, uh, how should I say, to get their attention. Mm -hmm. Then we went to the women. The women were more receptive, and I started going back to the women all the time. I became friendly with some of them, not too friendly, but letting them know. I also advised them about going to confession, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is what I did, and uh, some did go to confession with Father. And so, but the projector was brought, when they saw the movie, they couldn't, they couldn't believe that such a man existed. And Tell us what that movie presented, because we were referring to him, we, we referred to his miracles, but to tell us more about the it's man. A, it's his life story. I mean, yeah. It's a part of it, not all of it. And you, it, be, it begins with San Giovanni Rotondo, where Padre Pio lived, and explaining that uh, at a certain time, on September, uh, September 23rd, 1968, Padre Pio was praying in the choir loft. Suddenly he saw me in front of his crucifix. Suddenly he saw the crucifix sort of come alive. And the rays of light were coming from his hands, feet, and side. And part of it a loud cry, and he fell to the ground. Hands and feet and side were bleeding. That's when he received the stigmata. Mm -hmm. It's more descriptive in the book that I have at home. <coughs> so Padre Pio picked himself up. He suddenly realized that he, he was stigmatized. And he went to his room, and there was no way he could stop the bleeding. But eventually, he, he, told, he didn't tell anyone about it. He had he hid this this miracle that happened to him a little while until finally he had to tell the Father Superior, and word got out. Especially the altar boy used to serve his mass. Notice that Father Peter had these wounds. Yeah. And he went out telling everybody. About it. Everybody started coming there. Before you know it, hundreds and hundreds of thousands and thousands of people were coming to see Padre Pio just to say mass. <clears throat> his mass lasted at least two to three hours. Benedict. Two to three hours, and the last mass. The last pass in 19, 1968, I think it was. Padre Pio was about to get up from the uh, from the chair because he sat he said man sitting down because of the illness that he had. 
and because of the pain, and he got up and he fell. After that, his health started going down, going down, going down. Going down. But mm -hmm. then I still kept on going down to see the relics, I mean, see the <coughs> intervention of uh, the hospital, Morris Bernstein. Then people started calling me. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Sure, sure, sure. <coughs> people started Swallow. calling me. Maybe I should give you an azette or... I mean, better. <laughs> it's water. <laughs> hey, this guy, Mario, he has a movie on Padre Pio. Next thing you know, somebody called me. Some parishes to call me. And he's going to bring the movie on Padre Pio to the various parishes. Oh. And I went as far as Ohio. That was a trip I'll never forget. When I got there, it was so terribly cold. 500 people showed up that day. They wanted to, I decided to just simply tell the story of my confession. Uh, other incidents about Padre Pio, but the main thing was my confession. And it did help people, I think, to go realize that they've been far from God and to go to confession to Padre Pio. Because Padre Pio was a, a priest of God who wanted everyone to be forgiven of their sins. And he was asked one time, Father, what should I do? But he, these women used to gather around them Cause the postal father, what can I do to, to, to be saved? What do you, what, what's the formula? Mm. Okay, what's the formula? And he, he's a very simple man, Father Pierre. And he answered very simply. And he said, in a prima causa, the Eucharist. First thing. The yeah. Mass. Go to Mass. Second, go to confession. He said, go to confession. And do corporal works of mercy. He says, and read the lives of the saints. It's very simple. Confession, the Eucharist, and read the lives of the saints. Put yourself always in a state of grace. Mm. And this is what I try to follow, Padre Pio. That's a form is so simple. And these priests, I don't know what they're talking about, but the theology, they're mixing up, they're confusing our faith. That's it, caro mio, that's it. Confession, the Holy Eucharist, go to Mass and Communion, the Holy Eucharist, mm. and uh, you read the lives of the saints, spiritual reading, that's it. Mm, spiritual mm. reading, and always be made in contact, and if possible, go to Mass, go to communion at least once a week. If you can do it every day, he said, even better. But most importantly, a confessione, most important confession. No matter how long, how long has it been since your last confession, okay? And I know when I went to confession, about the period, I was very afraid, but he was so gentle with me, so yeah, very gentle. Yeah. yeah. That's the main theme of my talk, of my talk, the cure to confession. I emphasize it, and I hope some people that are out there listening that they do the same. I know I did it one time, and I was up in uh, some other parish up in was upstate New York, and I had a priest there, Father, I forget his name, Father Martin, I forget. And he agreed to sit in the back of the church in the corner to hear confessions. So after the talk, he said, long line of people started going to confession to him. So that's it. You have another question to ask? Oh, beautiful. Uh, so, okay, so you come back and, and come you back. start demonstrating I started, I started the his... The apostolate of Padre Pio yep. went to help a father, Archangel Sigurd. Okay, so you, you named it the apostolate. I mean, I'm, it is what it is. I'm, so, you, okay, so that's your, that's your particular mission now. That's right. And you're still apost apostolizing. What I'm doing now. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. How else have you spread the word of Padre Pio? I know... Oh, yes, I studied the word of Padre Pio. <coughs> As I say, Father Archangel Sika was my spiritual director. Mm -hmm. And he had an all-night vision in the church of St. Jean Baptiste every first Friday of the month. And I attended it, and then I got the idea that maybe I could do so something like that in my parish, a Lady of Peace. And it was a little difficult at first, but I got the pastor to recre to okay it. And we started the all-night vigil. After that, Father, Pio, I sent Father Archangel passed away. And he left a message for me. And the message was, tell Mary to keep on going. Oh. Tell Mary to keep on going. When he died, I, I felt so bad, so terribly bad. And we came very close to his family, his sister, his brother-in-law and nieces. And with the help of Father, I forget it, Father, 
I started the all-night vigil in the church for the peace. The hours were from 9 o'clock until 6 o'clock in the morning. Right. But wait, we started first in the church for a perpetual hope. Okay, we went to his father and said it was okay. I had some problem with, some, with the pastor in the beginning because he didn't really believe in that sort of thing, I guess. Yeah. But I heard that the Lady of Peace was my parish, which is just one block away. And I went to talk to Father, uh, Father Brogan. Father Brogan said, okay, bring it here, Mary. So we wrote it to Our Lady of Peace. And for 40 years, I was doing the All Night Vigil. I was a lay coordinator of the All Night Vigil. And luckily, I had some wonderful priests who assisted me, like Father Louis. Now, Father Louis, uh, you know, Father Louis. Um, I'm wonderful, but not that. Okay. Same wonderful. Um, was anything about Padre Pio presented during that vigil? Because he, was, he wasn't yes. a saint, he was a priest then well, in Italy. We formed, in, 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 during the vigil, we formed the Padre Pio prayer group. Great, okay. In the vigil, okay? Then I decided to form a, a prayer group in the parish itself every third Saturday of the month of the Holy Hour from five, uh, 4 o'clock to, to 5 o'clock. Mm. And we started to form prayer groups. Well, anyway, I started to form quite a few prayer groups in this country. My mind is not as young as it used to be, if I remember correctly. But uh, we started prayer groups in Ohio and different states. People called me up and how do you do it? I had the applications from San Giovanni Rotondo and we started more prayer groups. Oh, there's like a particular? Yeah, a different form. Form, okay, interesting. And I was really, really impressed when they told me they were starting prayer groups in various states, especially in California. And uh, Every third Saturday, this part of your prayer group, and I a piece, it's just one hour, the only hour. I did that for another, that's about 39 years. And so they closed it. I had to leave because they were closing the church down, Cardinal Dolan, and uh, agreed to uh, close it down. I don't know why, he had his reasons. And we went to St. Catherine of Siena with the all-night vigil. Mm -hmm. And we lasted there for at least a year, then, then the pastor left and then it stopped after 40 years doing the all night vigil. So the focus I'd like, I'd love the, to do it again, but... Uh, the the yeah. focus of the, of the vigil um, and the uh, Padre Pio prayer group is what? Bring people together to pray. Okay. Bring, pe and bring people together to pray before the Blessed Sacrament, following the dictates of Padre Pio, and going to confession. During the all night vigil, as we were praying, our father Richard Nielsen was a wonderful, wonderful man, I said to him, Father, when you first come here, you're going to have confessions. He says, yes. But look, you have to say the prayers. You come up and say the rosary. Mario, he said to me, you take care of that part. I'll take care of the... Uh, it's in the confession. He pointed to the confession. That's where we save souls. So you do the rest. So that's it. I started to great, say the rosary. Great. The people go up and say the rosary, the different prayers. We, we, did a, uh, we organized the uh, a vigil book. I still have a copy of it. Which reminds me, I have to have a copy of it at home. Maybe next time I come, I'll show it to you. Okay. All different prayers that yeah. you can follow. And with this book itself, you could, you could do an all night vigil. There are so many prayers there. That's great. Tell me more about Padre Pio. You, you, you referred to his various miracles by location and so on. I know you know more about his life. What else can you share about his life? And then and another time, we'll talk about how you brought him abroad to other countries. Padre Pio impressed me as being a very simple man. Very simple man. Very holy man. And a man of suffering. That Pope mm. Paul just called him. A man of suffering. He could tell the future, but most importantly, as I go back to the confession and Eucharist, okay? Once a man came to him because his wife wanted to meet him, go to confession to him, so she was always after him, let's go down and see, they were in Italy, always asked him, we're going to see Padre Pio. It was all right, he decided to take it there. But he didn't believe in this stuff, in this hocus pocus, as he called it. Right. They went down, and he met Padre Pio. He went to him and said, Father, his wife, tell him, go to confession, go to confession. So she, he agreed to go to see him, to talk to him. And he walks in, can, in the back of the church of sacristy, it was Padre Pio. I watched it, oh, I don't believe in this stuff. I don't believe in you, I don't believe in hell. Mm. So Father Pio looked at me and says, you'll believe it when you get there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> how the guy the here after that is, is there something wrong? This guy is telling me, I really want to get there. That means maybe I'm going to get there. So he decided he changed his mind to go to confession <laughs> part of the field. Play it safe. After that, he was a very holy man. <laughs> Did you go back to Italy uh, more times to meet him? Yes. Okay, uh, we'll, uh, we'll uh, continue uh, those. At uh, that time, let me see. 1957, he died in 1968. Okay. And in between that, you went back a few times. No, no, no. No? I didn't. After that, he was dead. After, after no, no, no. After you, the initial meeting, mm. you, you returned to Italy again? No, I did not. Oh, okay. I did not. Okay. So your, your connection... I'm only going to go back and told off again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Your connection was just that one meeting and that one confession. And also, another wonderful thing happened. I met my wife. Uh, he's from Sri Lanka. Okay, stop right there. That's a, that, that, that's a cliffhanger. Okay. <laughs> this is Mario Bruschi with Pablo Louis Skirti. And we're tracing a personal relationship that Mario developed with Padre Pio and what he did with that information, that spirituality, as he came home and as you're going to learn in another show, as he spread throughout the world. Thank you very much, Mario. Appreciate it. Thank you, Father. This is Father Louis Skirti with Mario Bruschi, and we're talking about his memories of Padre Pio.